Touch the leg. Welcome to Tibet This Week, a weekly news that tells you about Tibet, His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Central Tibetan Administration. The top headlines of the week. His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Central Tibetan Administration congratulate new Chief Minister of Himachal Pradesh. Tibetans observe anniversary of confirming of Nobel Peace Prize on His Holiness the Dalai Lama and International Human Rights Day. Central Tibetan Administration to weekly profile Tibetan political prisoners. Representative Tile Chugi highlights compassionate culture at Human Rights Conference in UN. Canadian Parliament passes motion endorsing Central Tibetan Administration's middle way approach. French Senate commemorates 60th anniversary of arrival of Tibetan children to France. Representatives of Offices of Tibet continue Tibet advocacy. On Sunday last week, His Holiness the Dalai Lama has congratulated the new Chief Minister of Himachal Pradesh, Shri Sukhwinder Singh Sugu, after his party won in the recent elections to the State Assembly. Appreciating the friendship and hospitality that the people from all walks of life in Himachal Pradesh have shown to him and the Tibetan people, His Holiness wished the new Chief Minister every success in fulfilling the hopes and aspirations of the people of the state. Sikyong Pemba Tsiring of the Central Tibetan Administration and the Deputy Speaker Dolma Tsiring Tekang of the Tibetan Parliament in Exile also extended their felicitation to the newly elected Chief Minister of Himachal Pradesh, Shri Sukhwinder Singh Sugu, and expressed their gratitude to the people and the government of the state. Last Saturday, December 10th, saw the Tibetans and friends of Tibet around the world observing are two different occasions. Celebration of the 33rd anniversary of confirming of Nobel Peace Prize on His Holiness the Dalai Lama and observation of the 74th International Human Rights Day. In Dharamshala, the official celebration of the 33rd anniversary of the confirming of Nobel Peace Prize on His Holiness the Dalai Lama took place at the Thikjin Chirling Tsuglakang in attendance of Chief Guest Jamyang Tsring Namgyal, Member of Parliament Lok Sabha, Special Guest Shri Sujit Kumar, Member of Parliament Raja Sabha, and Convener of All Party Indian Parliamentary Forum for Tibet, and Advocate Tashi Gelsen, the Chief Executive Councillor of the Ladakh Autonomous Hill Development Council and the City Aid Dignitaries. The guests at the event expressed their admiration for His Holiness the Dalai Lama and promised their continued support to the freedom of Tibet and the Tibetans. Delivering Kasha's statement, Sikyong Pemba Tsring emphasized on the relevance of His Holiness the Dalai Lama's message of peace in the 21st century. The statement of Tibetan Parliament in Exile, delivered by the Deputy Speaker Dolma Tsring Tekang, reminded the people on world's increased attention and understanding of the Tibetan cause after His Holiness the Dalai Lama was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Marking the 74th International Human Rights Day, the Kasha and the Tibetan Parliament in Exile condemned the ongoing repression of Tibetans in Tibet by the Chinese government, pointing out the recent reports of mass DNA sample collection in different parts of Tibet, recruitment of Tibetan children in colonial-style boarding schools, introduction of grid systems, and enforcement of the infamous zero-COVID policy. Today, even though numerous countries have signed the International Bill of Human Rights, cases of suppression and marginalization of minority nationalities and communities abound around the world, still persist. Across Tibet, unrelenting gross violations of human rights are taking place. In recent years, under a broad policy of the objective of the Chinese government, it has enforced forging of uniform Chinese national identity, sinicization of Tibetan Buddhism, and discriminatory language policies. 
This has resulted in coerced enrollment of Tibetan children in colonial style boarding schools. These coercive policies are causing an unprecedented threat to the survival of the distinctive Tibetan identity. Tibetan parliament in exile hosted a luncheon in honor of the guests that day. Sikyong Pemba Tsring and Deputy Speaker Dolma Tsring Tegang also attended the 25th Himalayan Festival hosted by the Indo-Tibetan Friendship Association. In Sao Paulo, Brazil, the anniversary of Nobel Peace Prize saw the former launch of a children's book, The Extraordinary Life of His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama, in the presence of Professor Leah Diskin, co-founder and director of Palace Antenna Institute, and Dr. Eliska Kozaza, the president of Tibet House Brazil. On Tuesday, the Tibetan community in the Netherlands celebrated the 33rd anniversary of the Nobel Peace Prize conferment to His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Tibetans in Nepal also celebrated the day. Tibetans in Tokyo, Japan participated in a peace march commemorating the 74th anniversary of the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights. Representative Dr. Arya Tsewang Gelbo took part in the peace rally along with representatives from the different countries and talked about China's human rights violations in Tibet. Representative Arya said the human rights violations in one country are not a problem of that particular country but a problem of international community. The Canberra Tibetan community and Tibet supporters in Australia held a protest rally from Garima Place to Chinese Embassy to highlight the atrocious human rights violations by the Chinese Communist Party on the same day. Similarly, the Auckland Tibetan community in New Zealand jointly with Sino-Tibetan Friendship Group and Friends of Tibet carried out a protest on the World Human Rights Day in front of Chinese Consulate General in Auckland. Tibetans and Tibet supporters in Switzerland and Liechtenstein, Germany, Italy and Austria also took part in a peace march in observation of International Human Rights Day. With commemoration of the 74th International Human Rights Day, the Department of Information and International Relations, Central Tibetan Administration undertook a weekly profiling of Tibetan political prisoners, highlighting their cases as the Chinese government continues to arbitrarily arrest, detain, sentence and torture Tibetans. The statement issued by the department said, it hopes the profiles of the Tibetan political prisoners will serve as a reminder to the Chinese government of its international human rights obligations and realize the need to put an end to the continued human rights violations in Tibet. In Geneva last Friday, Representative Tile Chugi of the Tibet Bureau attended a conference marking the 74th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Representative Chuki highlighted the importance of teachings and messages of His Holiness the Dalai Lama with regard to inculcating the sense of oneness of 8 billion human beings, all of whom aspire for happiness. The conference titled Human Rights for a Culture of Peace was attended by representatives from various organizations and religious communities. This way, the Canadian Parliament unanimously passed a motion endorsing the Central Tibetan Administration's middle way approach for a genuine autonomy for Tibet. The motion was proposed by Member of Parliament Garnet Genius calling on the House of Commons to make a clear call concerning Tibet's future by recognizing the adoption of middle way approach and empowering dialogue between representatives of Tibetan people with the Chinese government to enable Tibetans their rights to self-determination through genuine autonomy. And now with this concurrence debate, whereby the House considers formally expressing its agreement with this motion, we now finally have an opportunity for the Canadian House of Commons to decisively pronounce itself on Tibet's status and to make a clear call regarding Tibet's future. The motion reads, that this committee call for dialogue between representatives of the Tibetan people, His Holiness the Dalai Lama or his representatives and or the Central Tibetan Administration and the government of the People's Republic of China with a view to enabling Tibet 
to exercise genuine autonomy within the framework of the Chinese constitution. Senator Jacqueline Ostage Brino, president of the Tibet Group in the French Senate, organized an event to mark the 60th anniversary of the arrival of a group of 20 Tibetan children, 10 girls and 10 boys to France. The event brought together 11 of the children, now adults, to commemorate the event that marked France's shared past with Tibet. Representative Rixing Kengan delivered the message translated in French from His Holiness the Dalai Lama, expressing gratitude to everyone in France who was involved in bringing up the 20 Tibetans. The event was attended by senators, former senators, journalists, Tibetan members of parliament from Europe and Africa, and representatives from Tibetan community in France. Representative Namgil Chitub of the Office of Tibet, Washington, D.C., accompanied by Chinese liaison officer Sultim Gyatso, attended the annual Maturant breakfast hosted by the Embassy of Czech Republic in Washington, D.C. at the residence of Czech Ambassador on Thursday last week. Representative Namgil thanked the ambassador for the official invitation and recollected the memories of friendship between Czech and Tibet through previous ambassadors in Washington, D.C. Representative Karma Singhi of the Office of Tibet Australia, accompanied by Tibetan members of parliament from Australasia, Doring Tinzin Punzok, and representative from Tibetan community in Queensland, paid a courtesy call on Senator Larsley Waters, Federal MB Max Chandler Matter, Jonathan of Australian Greens, and Councillor Vicky Howard of Brisbane City Council. Representative Karma also attended the Queensland Tibetan community celebration of the 33rd anniversary of Nobel Peace Prize conferment to His Holiness the Dalai Lama on Saturday last week. Representative Bawa Kelsang Gelsen of the Office of Tibet Taiwan, accompanied by the staff of office, visited Buddhist Compassion Relief Tzu Chi Foundation in Taipei and attended a conference organized by its founder, Taiwanese Buddhist nun Cheng Yin. That is all for this week. See you in the next episode of Tibet This Week.